Hello everyone and welcome to uh, uh, this month's webinar on MoodleNet, our global network to share and curate open educational resources. So I have with me today uh, Martin de Guillermes, the CEO of Moodle and Moodle product, uh, MoodleNet product manager Paul Hodgson and together they're going to talk to you about MoodleNet and after the presentation, we're going to have a question and answer session. So you're very welcome to ask your questions in the chat, where you're also welcome to tell us where you're coming from. And if you want to raise your hands as well. So I'm going to hand over to Martin and Paul to start telling you and introducing MoodleNet to you. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Um... I'm, I'll, I'll kick off here, uh, it's, this is my fault, and um, uh, are you going to be forwarding the slides, or Paul, there we go. Um, look, I'm, so I'm going to talk about uh, this project uh, from a couple of angles, uh, and very short, and then get out of the way, and then let you see it with Paul. Um, the MoodleNet started with a problem. And it's been a problem we face since the very beginning of Moodle. It's really been there for 15, 20 years, which is that we are here and the purpose of Moodle is to empower educators. We're here to give people tools to do great quality education online. And we work mostly on Moodle platform. And the trouble is when you are first given a new course or you create a new course in Moodle, you see something like this, uh, a pretty empty blank canvas. Um, and then it's your job as the person making this course to decide what to do next. And uh, a lot of people, uh, well, a few different things happen. What, what happens is people might have a few uh, PDFs or documents that they used in their teaching before and they start dumping them in there. Um, but that's not always a really good experience for students. Um, or uh, people think, oh, well, I have to write all this content now. So they sit down and start adding pages and typing in all the content and creating their own textbook effectively and spending a lot of time doing it. Uh, or you go out onto the, the search engines and you start looking on the internet for things um, and you then have to go through a lot of stuff. So probably for every thing that you find, you might have to look at um, tens or dozens of different uh, versions of that before you find the right picture or the right uh, video or the right text or whatever. So um, I always felt we could do better in Moodle. So for quite a few years, uh, we've been trying to create uh, the solution. So uh, let's look at the next one here. The there, there is nothing out there that we can just connect to. There never has been anything that's just perfect to connect to. There's nothing that covered all of these, these, uh, these things that would work. So the, the solution is a place with curated collections. Um, if there was a place where other teachers had already done the effort of collecting the best content for exactly your subjects, that would be ideal. If somebody who was teaching your subject said, this video is really good and this text is really good and uh, these are the pictures I use and, uh, and they, they could speak from experience because they've actually tested them with students uh, and they could say this worked. That would be great. So this collection and all the work people have done to find those things is already been done. The curation has been done and now hopefully you coming on later can benefit. It should be very integrated with Moodle. So it should be when you're looking at that empty course, it should be a couple of clicks away so you can find it really easily. The third point here is that we don't want to build a system that is one big system that we own. We don't want this to be in the control of one organization. We're trying to build infrastructure. And the way Moodle is, is as open source, is exactly the same. It's a software that everyone can use, everybody can customize, people can uh, adapt to their own circumstances. And so uh, we've, we think MoodleNet should be the same way. There should be um, lots of opportunity for everyone to control a bit of MoodleNet 
and that it all works together in a nice consistent way. And we call that federation, when you federate across a number of, um, of copies of the, of the software. Uh, this thing should also handle links. So there's tons of existing content out there. All of that should be available. But also there should be a place where you can upload things. So if you have a whole Moodle course that you want to share with others, there should be a way to upload that or, or a PDF or whatever it is. Uh, and finally, this, is a, this should be an open source platform. We want the community to help build this thing, to help improve it and all of the things that happens with the Moodle learning management system itself. So that is what MoodleNet is. So I'll just cut to the next uh, slide here. Um, and, and we've had a number of attempts to build this system. I think we're on our third or fourth. Um, we, we, we tried to build it on Moodle itself. Uh, that, that didn't work for a few reasons. Uh, we tried to build it using some very new technologies a couple of years ago, and that didn't work for certain reasons. And so now we have this one. We're calling it 2.0 because a lot of those early ones are, didn't really take off. Um, we have a whole new user experience. Uh, you can find and use resources. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are already starting to help test it. And you, you're going to see all of that. Um, the resources are all tagged with metadata. And this is what makes it different from just a Google search in that this is for education. So we're able to label things educationally and, and focus on this as an educational content system. Um, collections can be owned by people. So this is a very important that, and something that's come up over, the, over some of the previous iterations that it wasn't doing. In this version, people own their collections. And that's very important that someone is responsible for their collection. And uh, they, that, that way they get the credit for it. Um, also, you know who to talk to. Um, and if it isn't any good, well, you know, um, you the same, same thing, right? You can, uh, you, you know, that the, that's uh, who to talk to and fix that. So, um, and, and the thing is, if you own it, you actually feel like you're more invested and you want to make it a higher quality. Uh, there's ways to like things and we want the community to judge what is good and what is not good. Uh, so that as well as the curation, everything can be, evaluated in gentle ways so that the, the over time the best stuff is available at the top and that's what you'll find um, and we have the ability to follow um, things i think it's important that if you find someone who's doing good work that and they're in your area it's great to stay in touch with them and then see new stuff they come up with in the future because that's going to be useful and we start working together better um, or just even to follow a subject and see updates in that particular subject area. We have a profile, quite a prominent profile, and the reason for that is to, um, we hope that this will be a place where everyone can be proud of their MoodleNet profile and say, well, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time researching these areas and, and uh, I, I'm, I like to be known for that. Um, so hopefully in, in time, it'll become another profile as part of your portfolio, along with your LinkedIn profile and your Facebook profiles and your Twitter profiles. Um, and the last thing here is the integration with Moodle. We really want to work on making the integration with Moodle very, very uh, close so that it's a good experience, but it isn't limited to Moodle. Um, and we are building in a way that's very open to the world and, and uh, uh, we'll be able to connect with all kinds of systems in the future. Some of the metadata here, um, I'm, I don't know if you want to talk about this, Paul, or, or shall I? Yeah, yeah I'm happy to talk about it if you want me to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah look, I'll, I'll hand over to you, Paul, but uh, so I'll introduce Paul. Paul's the, the project, the product manager of MoodleNet um, and leading all the development now, and he is more than qualified to talk about all these sort of details and I'll over to you, Paul. Thanks, Martin, and uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for attending today. Um, well, I'll show you the metadata thing in a moment, just to talk about a little bit about the uh, the reason why we did this, uh, how we did. These are the ways you can actually describe your resource on MoodleNet. So um, you can describe based on a subject and that's based on the International Standard Classification of Education. Um, you can give it a level of education and you can give it a license based on Creative Commons. And these three things um, 
allow someone to judge exactly if it's in the right area, if it's the right level, and obviously if you can use it and uh, remix it, et cetera. Um, I will demonstrate this more than, uh, than talk about it. Um, also, you can do educational types. You can say what's in there. Is it an assessment? Is it a presentation? Is it a website? Is it a reading? Is it a concept map? Is it? And there are lots and lots based on the learning object model of the IEEE. And what format is it in? So is it a video? Is it text? Is it a PDF? Is it uh, et cetera? And that covers any MIME type that you can think about. Um, you can even put in Moodle backup files if you wanted to share, let's say, a, a, a whole course you could share that on MoodleNet to other people for them to send to their Moodle as well. And finally, language, of course, um, on ISO 639, we've got lots of languages available uh, as well on every resource. Um, let's take a look. I'm just going to escape my screen for a moment so I can switch my window. Um, essentially, what you're looking at now is available online. It's uh, Moodle.net, and uh, you can access this uh, right now. Um, I'm going to show you a live uh, little run through so you can see it. And what I'm looking at here is um, the landing page or the home page which is as a new user, not logged in, no authentication. And the spirit of openness, the idea behind this is that you should be able to find and use resources without an account. Um, so you'll be able to see here, I can search for anything straight away. So if I go for Earth, for example, I can see a subject, which Martin mentioned. I can see the collections. I can see the resources. And I can see the people that are all relevant to that search term. Um, and hopefully you can see how responsive it is as well. So if I was to change that immediately, I get climate, um, resources, collections, and people as well. Now, from here, you can see that even though I can see everything, I can't actually start to follow anything. I can go in and, and see people. So I could say, for example, well, um, let's see this collection on climate change. This is um, what's been added in terms of resources to the system by MoodleNet. So we create and curate some collections as well in MoodleNet, but generally it's other people that do it. Um, let me just search for a user, and uh, Anna's on the call, so I hope she doesn't mind me using her profile here. Um, if I want to search for a specific person, I can also do that. So I've just pulled up Anna, who's on the MoodleNet team here, and I can see what Anna is doing on the system. Now, I cannot follow Anna, and I cannot contact Anna, because I am a guest user. Um, I'm going to show you once we've logged in and once we've created an account what we can do with this. And this tells you the, the resources that Anna has added to MoodleNet and the, the curation of, uh, of content here as well. And you can see here Anna has four followers, five kudos, which I'll get to in a moment, and has uploaded seven resources. So Martin mentioned here about having a profile page where you can build your profile as an educator. And as you add resources, and you can see there are likes on the side here, which I cannot like because I'm a guest user, but I could if I was a full user. Anna is then awarded kudos. So hopefully with a bit of mathematics, we can add up these likes and that should equal number of kudos that Anna's had. This is a very rudimentary and basic way of measuring the usefulness of the profile of that person and also the resources individually. Um, and this is gonna become much bigger in terms of uh, how we uh, eventually search for items on MoodleNet and how things are rated as good items against those that aren't so good and will become top of the search routines. Okay, so let me log in and I'll show you the difference. I'm just going to log in as myself. I have a, a profile on here and you'll see straight away my profile is presented when I log in. You can log in right now. You can sign up. All you'll have to do is to click a link in your email to validate that you are a, a real uh, a user and you will be able to do this yourself and customize your profile page. But you can see totally customizable with my um, avatar, my cover page, and um, it then you can edit the, the actual uh, content of your page as well. So you should be able to identify it's me straight away. And you can see I've got 14 followers, 14 kudos, and I've uploaded 10 resources to this. And I'm curating two collections here, one on NASA and one on animals. Now, if I was to look around now at MoodleNet, if I was to go back and say, well, okay, let me search on climate again, which I did the first time, you'll see now, that I can follow people immediately who have resources. Now, if you look at this card on people, you'll see the number of people following them, the number of kudos they've got, and the number of resources. So you see there's quite a few people who are here looking for content. But as we get through it, you'll see that some people here are actually starting to be followed and curate uh, their own collections. So if I look at the climate change that was MoodleNet before, you can now see that I can like, unlike, bookmark, follow so that will follow the collection itself or i can bookmark it so the difference between bookmark and follow bookmark is really i want to check this later 
I'm not ready to follow it. Follow it is that's actively my subject and I'd like to follow this collection. And you can always then get to it from your profile. So if I follow that climate change collection and then I go to my profile and see what I'm following, you'll see that climate change is now in my profile list so that I get access to everything. You can see who I'm following as well. So I can go straight into their uh, resources and see what they're doing. Okay, so searching is exactly the same whether you're a guest user or a full user. It's only the ability to like, follow, get involved, contact people um, if you are a full user. You'll see if I go back to Anna's profile here that I can unfollow Anna and follow again, or I can actually message Anna if that's someone I want to get in touch with. Um, there's no um, email addresses that are publicly available, so this is all in the system and it's hidden and it's secure. So don't worry about losing your email address to a system. It's not public at all. Let me show you a little bit about um, adding resources here. So starting with this plus sign up here, you'll see you can do a new resource or a new collection. So as said before, the collection is the curation side of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be your own resources in a collection. It can be anywhere on MoodleNet. If I just add a resource here, it's a very quick process to actually add this, but it's actually extremely important that you put as much data in here as you can. Um, I'm going to do two things. First thing I'm going to do is to add um, a link so you can see a link here. And I found a resource here on the water cycle from October 2010 that I thought was quite useful to my students. Um, so I'm going to add this just as a link. So if I copy the URL there, um, I can add this back into, paste the link and add it. Now I can add a thumbnail if I wish to add a thumbnail to that. If I don't, Moodle will put a lot, Moodle now will put an automatic thumbnail in there for you. And I need to start adding some metadata. These things are so important because they give the, uh, the resource the searchability aspect. So what we have here is we really would like something which contains lots of relevant text that we can search on. So I'm going to put sort of an executive summary in there. And what's also really useful is if we can put in how people can use this with their students, because that's often how they're searching for things. Um, and this is obviously the water cycle. I'll give it a quick uh, title. Subject, these are the I said categories, and you can just start to type, well, this is an environmental type uh, science subject. So I'll select that. Now, as default, in case you wanted to add some resources and keep them private so they don't appear in the search results straight away, the visibility is set to private. But you can go to public if you're ready. You can add these things as private, come back later, and publish them uh, as well. So I'm going to make this published. And do I want to add it to any of my collections? Now, not really, because this is my resource and these curated collections are other people's resources that I use. Um, so I'm not going to add anything at that stage. And finally, this is the metadata which you don't have to add. This is optional. However, this makes it much more likely that your, um, your resource will be found and used because people are looking for what is this? Is it, is it a full course? Uh, what language, what level is it at? Well, this is uh, lower secondary education. You saw from the resource, it was October 2010. And you don't have to drop these down. You can actually search in these boxes as well. Um, and this one is in English. But you can see lots and lots of language options. So when I create this resource, it will present it back to me. And there you go, that is now publicly available on MoodleNet. And you'll see from a resource, anyone who finds this will see the screen and they can then add it to their own collection. They can follow the link for it or they can send it into their Moodle uh, straight into a course. So a teacher can actually be in a course on Moodle and say, go and get this from MoodleNet and it will bring it back as in this case, a link, but it could be a resource image file PDF and it would put it into their course directly. I'm just gonna show you that very quickly as well in terms of a file. Um, so you can see the difference. So I'm going to do a new resource again, and this time I'm going to click to upload a file. You can't see where I'm browsing, of course, but I'm just going to put a PDF in here, which is this PDF. It's a climate change PDF um, uh, from the UK, and I'm going to just take the title and put it in there. And again, we want a good description, so I'm going to just use the executive summary um, in terms of this. And, and normally I would also put how this is useful in my course. Here we go. Again, this time, because it's an, um, a file, it's a PDF file, 
I'm uploading it, I'm going to have to tell the system what license it operates under. Now, this is a totally open resource. Otherwise, I, I really wouldn't have added it to, to MoodleNet, although you can add any of these Creative Commons licenses. Um, this is totally in the public domain and will be shown as such on the resource so people know they can use it. Again, it's an environmental science resource. And I'm going to public, publish this. Now, this time, do I want to add it to anything? No, I don't again, because this is a resource that I want other people to find and use. And what is it? Well, this one is more of a, a data set or a glossary. Um, it's for the same level of, of education. Um, the date for this one is actually right there. It was in 2020. We don't know when. So we will change that just to be 2020. And this one is also in English, but you can see the range of languages we have there. If you wanted to have different languages, it's fine. And we're getting quite a lot of non-English content in MoodleNet already. So this time, this file is uploaded to MoodleNet. And there it is. Now you'll see the differences here. I can still send it to Moodle. I can still add it to a collection, but this time I can download and use it. And that's very important because that can be used in any LMS or any educational uh, system at that point. You don't have to use it just with Moodle. Okay. So that's MoodleNet. Now, if I search for those things, so if I say consuming in here, consuming, there you go. And there's the resource I've just uploaded. So it's immediately available in the search results. Let's talk about collections then for a moment. So collections this time, if I wanted to have a new collection, um, I could put an image in for myself if I wanted to, and it would show on the collections page. Um, this is going to be on uh, environment. And this is going to be, it could be a full description on the sorts of things I teach. It could be the description of the resources, whatever you wish. Um, remember, this is also searchable, so it should be a full um, description. And again, it will stay private until you make it public. And that's it. The collection is now there. Now I can go and search on environment. Okay, I did it on consumption. So there was that one. I can now add that to my environmental collection. And essentially my environmental collection is available to other users now from my profile. It's appeared there and in it is the resource that I've added. And that's what we mean by curation, that uh, this can become a very long list of useful items for the environment. Now in there, people can bookmark and like. If you like your own resources, you don't get kudos, of course, that would, uh, that would not make sense. Um, but you can, people can like it, follow it, bookmark it, and so on. And again, they can then just use it as I did in their own system. And that's essentially MoodleNet. The nice thing about it is, you know, your bookmarks are still available. Anything you've bookmarked is here. It's available via your profile. Anything you're following is here. So you could just follow the subjects that you're interested in and it would then give you the resources that are in that subject. You could just follow collections or say somebody is really um, good in terms of this. And John, welcome to the call. I saw you join earlier. Um, so you can, you can use John's resources there as well. Again, really nicely tagged and ready to be used. Now, it's important that we do give kudos and we do give likes uh, to things because that's the way when we search here, that things are going to rise in the search engine. So this resource here, and if I look at them all, these are all based on, and you can see there's one there that has a like, eventually that liked resource being the highest rated one for this search would come top of the list. And that's essentially it. You can filter by subjects, collection, resource, and people, relevance, popularity, um, and that is MoodleNet as it says. And you can see from the landing page here, we're actually putting things on here which are well-liked, well-used, um, or subjects that have a lot of decent content in, we actually add those to the front page. Now, as Martin said earlier, MoodleNet you can install for yourself. So you get complete control over this as, a, as an organization as well, if you wish to do that. Um, and then you can federate it back. And if you do federate it back to MoodleNet Central, when we search in here, it will search not only the MoodleNet Central, but also your federated instance of data as well. So all the search results will come through um, this screen. So just to show you a couple of things that, uh, that will happen um, in terms of 
the Moodle integration. So I'm just going to skip back all, all these screens because this is your recorded uh, screen uh, shots if you want to look at this later. But you'll see here, if I send something to Moodle, a little pop-up will come up and say, where is your Moodle site? And you can put your Moodle site in and send it straight over. Or if your Moodle is configured correctly with Moodle Net Central, and it's as simple as this, it's in the admin side of your Moodle installation, um, it, it works from 3.9 onwards. Um, it will work in version four as well, once you get uh, that version, you can put this in or your own instance and then Moodle will send automatically and will include this next page, which is when you add an activity or a resource down at the bottom, you will have a link to browse content from MoodleNet and bring it straight into your course in Moodle. So what's next? Uh, well, we'd like you to use MoodleNet and we'd like you to add some really good educational resources here um, to get it used and build up your own education profile. It's still... Um, in development, we are still looking at future features. We are still looking at any little tweaks we can do to make it better. We'd really like to know how you could use MoodleNet. And you can tell us today, but also you can, not, you can contribute in our tracker. In MoodleNet itself, when you log in, there is a link to tracker in the bottom of the page. Um, you can use it institution, institutional level, install it yourself. Um, and obviously being open source, we're very keen to work with people who can develop and can sponsor some development within MoodleNet. Um, to make it better, because there are some very large uh, software developments coming to make it more useful. Um, and if you've done anything in the past, even on MoodleNet or somewhere else, please add them to MoodleNet. Um, with more content becomes a greater useful system. Um, and that's where we are. So thank you very much. I will pass back to, uh, to Mary. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, that was really good. So what I'm going to do now then is, uh, Paul and Martin, we have lots of questions and I'm going to take a look at them and I'm going to go through them one at a time, if that's okay with you and everyone, and uh, feel free either of you to answer them. So starting with um, Sa uh, Sally, who was asking, talking about the, the differences between MoodleNet and OER Commons. I can I can address that one. So yes, uh, OER Commons and uh, and many other OER collections are out there. They they don't have the full benefit that we need in the LMS. So the integration in the LMS is not ever going to be as good. And secondly, um, if you go and look at OER Commons, there are thousands and thousands of things arranged by metadata in a very similar way. Um, but I don't see the small collections um, the, that are curated by individual teachers that are easy to find and get uh, and, and that kind of more personal approach, which I, I think uh, certainly works on places like Pinterest and, and other places like that. Um, and I, I think it's a, look, it's an experiment as well. We're, we're going to see how it's going to work, but I, I think it, it will it will enable more people to feel more able to uh, put their expertise into the system. OER Commons is sort of one big site, and, um, and that's another angle that uh, MoodleNet is designed to be hosted by many, many organisations, um, and OER Commons is reliant on one organization to host it. If that organization doesn't get funding next year, that site could disappear. And um, so we're, we're trying to build something that's distributed. The risk is distributed here. Okay. Uh, Sam is very pleased with the bookmarks and the likes, by the way, a comment there. And also is talking about um, copyrights and trusting users and how will you deal with that kind of thing? Uh, well, you might have noticed in that demo, there was some junk. Um, and, and that's because Moodle.net, which is our installation of that open source software. Um, so it's only the, it's the main one. But uh, it has been open for a while. We've been testing. We've had, it, we've had the doors wide open. Anybody can come in and, and upload stuff. And they have been. Um, so the, the work from here on is putting barriers in so that only people who are putting good stuff are able to be seen um, and the very first one is landing when paul this uh, next week? week next week yeah 
next week, um, which is that uh, there'll be a small barrier to jump that when you first get on the site, you uh, even when you have an account, uh, you can upload things, but those things can't be seen by anyone else. Um, so when you have five resources, good resources, you can apply to be approved and our team will approve the user and then your things will, will appear and be seen. Now, that's a very base level thing. Um, and we have some, well, Paul has some interesting plans with the MoodleNet team to uh, create a full sort of gamification tree, something like you might see on uh, Stack Overflow or uh, if you've ever looked at Apple discussions or a lot of online forums, um, users rank up as they do more good things. And uh, the, the, the more good things you do, the more trust everyone gets and the more responsibilities you're given and, and you're able to do more and more. So this way we can let the community manage things as, as much as possible. Okay, thank you. We have a couple of language related questions. Uh, Abbas was asking, does it support Arabic language? And Anna's replied, yes. Um, I wonder if you could talk a bit in general about the language interface or la resources in different languages. Chell was saying, if we have a resource uh, and we upload it in, in different, if we have it in different languages, do we have to upload every single different language or can we upload it once and it will can be accessed or downloaded in, in our choice of language? So maybe something on that lines. Yeah, I, I can take that one. Um, essentially at the moment, each resource is linked to one language. There's, there isn't a, a, a feature to say this is available in these. So it's separate resources at the moment, but this is what exactly we want to know because this is where we're going with MoodleNet right now. You can say, we need this as a, as a, as a function, as a feature, it will go into the roadmap for discussion. And the same as we do with Moodle, you know, we will be looking at who votes for what and, and how many people are interested and that will get prioritized on that basis. Uh, so yes, it does do Arabic, it, it does support all those. Uh, languages, um, but it's single language, single resource right now. Okay, thank you. And um, Abbas is asking about visibility of the students. So for instance, can I create a resource and make it only visible to my students if they then sign up as well in Moodle.net? Uh, I'll, I'll take that one because I noticed there was a bit of a thread of people saying, this is great, but I just want to have my own yeah. private space. And that is, that is exactly the design. So MoodleNet is designed for you to able, if you want to, you can install your own instance, your own uh, copy of MoodleNet, administer it, run it your own way, have your own accounts. It can be private. You don't need to let everyone else in and you, can, you could set it up so that only your institution has access or maybe your own set of institutions. Um, it's... It's not really, we have not thought about it as a place for students to be hanging out there. Like it's, it doesn't replace Moodle. If you actually just want to give resources to your class, just put them in Moodle. You don't need MoodleNet for that. Um, but if you want to have a kind of repository, a collection of curations going on over time, uh, then um, installation of MoodleNet might work for you. Uh, and then how it works is there's a switch, or there will be a switch to say, uh, we would like our Moodle net to be accessible to the world. And when you turn on the switch, it's now uh, connected to the other Moodle net sites and you can, and one global search can search all of them. Just to add to that one, because there's another question I noticed in the chat saying, um, do we copy or do we link to uh, federated data? Well, it's just a link. We're not going to host uh, the world. That's the idea with a distributed system. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of what is uploaded, Nadav's asking, how about uploading or sharing Moodle modules? Uh, I would say no, that's not a proper use of Moodle. I mean, I don't think it would be very good to have code, running code shared through a system like this. Um, even content is tricky enough, but uh, code is, is not something. We have other solutions for code Nadav, the Moodle plugins database, and we're looking at extending that into a kind of an app store as well. So uh, that'll be more properly like an app store. Okay, uh, Nikos is asking, when you add a resource in your collection, can you edit it afterwards? Meaning, can I get a resource, 
then build on it, generating a new resource, essentially adding other metadata and so on. Absolutely. As long as you put in the three basic pieces of information, which is the resource itself, um, the subject, a title and a description um, and a license, if it's an actual upload, everything else can be done later. You can add at that point and come back and edit, edit it as much as you want. Okay, thank you. And in terms of feedback on resources, we know that you can like resources, but Mark is asking, are there plans to allow users to leave comments or, or feedback? In other words, more detailed feedback could be useful for the creator to receive feedback on maybe how the others have used it or what they liked about it. Absolutely, yes, this is coming. Next, uh, when we talk about um, gamification, we talk about that social aspect of how people comment. I don't know if you're aware of somewhere like Stack Overflow, this is all part of the same system for gamification where the comment itself is then marked as useful. It's useful to the teacher, it's useful to the person that, uh, that wants to read it, et cetera. So this is on the plan for the next version, yes. Okay, and Nadav has another question. Is it possible to bulk upload resources with metadata? It's a great will, question. Yeah, go on, Martin. <laughs> will you get the metadata right? Uh, you know, if you're dumping a thousand things into your system, is it going to be useful to anyone afterwards is my question. Um, I, I think it's, I, we, I don't, don't, there's no tool for that right yet, Paul, but um, surely that. as an open source project, if people solve those problems, there'll be great add-ons or plugins or additions to MoodleNet for sure. I think it, overall, I, I would like to see MoodleNet focus on quality over quantity, um, but we'll, you know, we're going to see how, how it works out. Right, thank you. And is it possible to order items within a collection? At the moment, no, they're in the order that you upload them, um, but that's again another one that would be quite easy for somebody to contribute something to make that av available, yeah. Okay, thank you. And another question from Nadav, but I'm going to choose other people as well, actually. I, I think you've kind of covered this. He's asking, can teachers discuss a resource? Well, you're planning on extra feedback, aren't you? I suppose that's sort of the way towards it. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, Michael says, is there any granularity availability plan for public versus private resources um, in terms of sharing assessments with only other educators. Again, I think you've sort of covered that in that you can have your own install, but what about, you know, other ways centrally? Well, it depends on how you want to let them in and how do you know they're an educator? Is it, are they very particular people? Like, do you have a group of 100 people you want to share it with? In which case you might want to run your own private MoodleNet server and give them access to it. Um, but, uh, I, it might get a little complicated if everyone's managing access on a per resource basis. You know, maybe, maybe it'll get there, but uh, I think our, our job is to try and keep everything simple as possible. If it gets too complicated, it's probably going to get hard to use and then, and then it won't be used. Okay, I think this has already been answered, but I want to highlight it really from Fatima, Danielle, Will there be whole Moodle courses available on MoodleNet that can give inspiration to other course developers for content, different styles of activities, information, et cetera? As someone who's created many courses, this will be so useful to me. Absolutely, yes. Um, this is exactly what it's intended for. And um, we are already working on, if you were to back up a Moodle course, how do we actually extrapolate that data into MoodleNet so that it gives you a full overview of what that course is about before you then send it back to your version of Moodle. So yes. It is It is already possible to put backups, Moodle backups into yeah. Moodle yeah. now uh, and send them back to Moodle back. So it supports that. It's uh, what, what Paul was saying was about getting a preview of the course before you copy it into your own Moodle. And uh, Shell is saying, if we find some content that's not appropriate, how should we proceed? I mean, for now, for instance. That's what Martin was saying about this, this new feature that's coming next week, which is essentially we want to be able to approve people before they can post publicly. They can post, but it doesn't become public until you approve them as a, a trusted um, profile, essentially. So that will be available from next week. Um, other than that, you will be able to restrict the user accounts if you have your own install. So you could say that only our 
network of, uh, of email addresses is allowed to post anything. Um, otherwise, they would just be ignored um, or closed down completely so they couldn't post. Um, uh, and, and we can also add, uh, and we've, we've discussed uh, ways of flagging problematic content that might have slipped through or not been seen. Um, but we have to be careful making that completely automated because, you know, say all of us here decide to go to a resource, we're having a Zoom call and, hey, let's go and all thumbs down on one resource. We could take it, we could take it off, the, off the site, um, even if it was actually good. So uh, we, we, uh, th th these are really interesting issues on how we collaboratively um, manage so much data together. And I think these are important problems for us to solve in this age. So uh, I'm hoping the Moodle community will help us solve these things in a nice way. What we don't want to do is have a, a team of 100,000 uh, editors working behind the scenes um, like Facebook, having to continually check everything. Thank you. Um, I see lots of questions, so I'm going to move on. Uh, Marlene, the social side of MoodleNet. So we know about the communication in terms of comments about resources. What about communication separate or independent from resources, such as making a post or having a news feed? Yes, essentially that's uh, already capable. We're curating the, the front page, which is a news feed essentially, uh, but that will all come into the gamification as well. So you, when you log into MoodleNet, you will have, well, these are the things that you are interested in, the things that you follow, but also on the other side, these are the things which are uh, being discussed and are hot topics, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, that's coming with the gamification. Thank you. We have a technical question here, so I'll just read it. Is a release planned with uh, an official release planned with Docker? Um, yep. If you follow the um, document link to the Moodle Docs, there's already a Docker installation out there um, of this version we're running um, on NPM. So you can get that right now and install it yourself. Uh, thank you. Um, Sally's asking, can you upload video? I, I don't see why not. Right, you're right, Mary. You don't see why not. It's it's a technical discussion. That one. The answer is yes. Technically, you you can, but we uh, we obviously have to control the server resources. Um, so if someone put a, a twenty gigabyte video file, it's probably not the best use of resources, and that might be restricted by the environment. But yes, is the is the short answer to that. Um, we have a couple of technical questions. I don't know how far you want to go or detail you want to do with that, unless there's somewhere you can point people to. Alex wants to know the tech requirements to run a MoodleNet server for local use. Are they similar to running Moodle? Um, would you be able to configure it on your internet intranet or would it require technical settings? I mean, obviously, it's a technical install. Um, there is some scripting capability. I don't want to get too technical. If you want to go to the community and ask questions, I'm happy that the team answers these very specifically. But if you look at the instructions for the install, it is actually very straightforward. If you know how to do a couple of SSH scripts, um, you can actually pull MoodleNet down to your intranet locally in about four comments and set it up and run it that quickly. Um, so, yes, but any technical questions, put them in the community and we'll answer them as soon as we can. If I can add to that, yes. um, I would say that if you can install Moodle uh, from scratch, and that means putting PHP and databases and things like that, then you'll have no problem installing this. But it is a completely different set of technologies. Um, and it's not really just the install, it's maintenance. So, you know, you're a, you've are you become a system administrator now, so you are now running a system that's going to have updates and it's going to have maintenance. Um, and it's like anything else so yeah it's not i don't think it's very hard but it's definitely something to consider richard's asking can you filter a search by language that's coming as well in the next version at the moment you will if you do a, a keyword search it will just give you all languages but you saw on the left that you can filter by people resources any any metadata as the system builds is going to include the ability to filter by those metadata. Yes, on the on the left hand side of the page. Okay, uh, I think there's a quick answer to this, Luca. Since we seem to be in the technical uh, side, does this MoodleNet two redesign still relay to the Activity Pub protocol? I can probably take that. Uh, no, because um, the, and that was actually an issue with the previous 
iteration, we tried to build the whole thing around this protocol. Um, and that led to the architecture of the system going a certain way. Um, that protocol was not perfect for our use case. And so the architecture turned out to be not very easy to work with in, in summary. So with the redesign, we took a lot of time to go back to fundamentals. Um, I think Activity Pub is still a useful format for transferring data from one system to another. I would not build a system around it again. Um, so we can still add Activity Pub support to MoodleNet now. We can still add it, but it hasn't been a focus. Uh, the focus has been to get the core experience right in the structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've just got three more, and I see we're, we're coming towards the hour, which is brilliant. How will you, from Kepa, how will you manage the translation of the project into other languages? It was a technical answer to that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's totally capable to use what we call POT files um, on a MoodleNet instance so that it's automatically, all the strings are translated into language you want, uh, and that's inbuilt into the system. We're running it only in English right now, but uh, yeah, we, this will be browser-based translation automatically based on, uh, on POT files. Thank you. Um, now, Sally is giving me a great opportunity to promote the course that is attached to this uh, webinar because she's saying, should I be able to create a resource? I I'm assuming she means add one. It doesn't seem to work. Um, Sally, if it doesn't work or you you're having uh, problems, please go into the course and we'd love everyone to go in the course and try the activities. And there is a forum there where we can discuss MoodleNet. And if you complete the activities, you can get a badge. So maybe that might help you. Diana says, thanks for this. It's something which the community is eager to use. Will it have the possibility to have communication and resources limited to a group or community so you can adhere to a group? That's slightly too connected to having your own organizations uh, yeah. version, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Our it's the same. The, the similar answer is that if, if you have a large-ish use case where it makes it worth it to run an, your own MoodleNet installation, then that's what you should do. You run a MoodleNet of your own, put your own things in there, have your own people there. Um, however, the overall project, we are biased towards opening and we want to open things. We want to encourage people to share. Um, we are it, the, the lovely thing about open source is that it also encourages privacy, um, but uh, we hope that most people will, will default to sharing uh, things. Excellent. Uh, Richard is saying this all looks brilliant. 10,000 kudos to Paul and his team, which is uh, nice. And, um, as we're heading towards the uh, top of the hour now, I'd just like to know how any of you are thinking you might want to use MoodleNet yourself in your own organizations and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can get involved in Academy having joined in this particular webinar. So uh, are there any more questions or any uh, thoughts on how you might use MoodleNet? Sally says we've been looking for something like this for ages and now you've found it Sally. Yeah I'd, I would love to know what kind of use case you have, uh, you know, university, is it college, is it a, a private company, is it a some other sort of institution? Yes, yeah, Sally, for instance, if you've been looking for something like this for ages, why have you been uh, looking for it? If you if you'd like to tell us. Or anyone else? No. Throw it in there. Uh, you do you want to speak, Luca, quickly? Yeah, turn on some mics. Okay. Um, Kim's saying she's asking. Oh, lots of people are answering now. I'm losing track. Yeah, okay. So to break the ice, so our institution, we really thought about a platform which we like to have to um, have the lecture shares open educational resources. But then we call it the Virtual Academy or in German, the Virtuelle Akademie. And as you probably know, we um, focused to use that technology. And so, yeah, um, in our place, there's a MoodleNet server running already. And well, looking forward to introduce that to the people. Great, thank you. Thanks, We've Luke. got 
uh, Kim, who's going to ask her college to connect to MoodleNet, Eduardo, who is lobbying for MoodleNet in K-12 K education in Israel, uh, who says there's much to benefit from MoodleNet. Um, Justin says, not grand focus, but it will be very useful as a content repository for organizations with large content databases. Um, Sally says, we have huge collections of resources and we want staff to be able to share not only with we, each other, but to be able to publish openly. And that is a great idea. Um, I'm going to ask one last question and then I'm going to talk to you about getting involved in Academy. Alex, is there a way to have integration with H5P OER Hub? Uh, I can talk about that. Um, so they have, a, a, they have their own. Um, I, one easy way to, integ to integrate is if you have a number of H5P resources that you think are useful and, and belong together in a collection, then you can just manually create one resource for each one in MoodleNet and link them across and just put them into a collection. Um, an automatic joining of the two, it's very hard to see how that would work or should work. Um, Really, I think uh, we need to be focusing on the collections part, not just on putting millions of things in there, because then you have the same problem as Google does, right? As search engines have. Um, yeah, we need to focus on human beings choosing some things and putting them in there. I, I think so. Could I just add something there as well? From the questions I can see, you know, people are um, obviously thinking we've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of resources and things like that. We are looking to do a few tests with people as as lucas have already uh, we're already helping you guys out um to try and get you with your own instance and, and prove it as a case so you know if you want to contact me um, i'll certainly talk to you about how we can help you do it yeah thank you and yes we are getting lots of people talking about how they envisage using moodle net and can i just remind you before we finish then that we have a discussion forum on the course where you're welcome to go and continue asking questions and talking about MoodleNet. So I would just like to um, thank Martin and Paul very much for the presentation and thank all of you for your questions. And if you've enjoyed this, then please will you get involved in Academy by joining the Get Involved course, which is on Academy, and suggesting other ideas for us for webinars and courses. You might even like to contribute to a webinar yourself uh, as a presenter, and then you will have a presenter badge. Or if you are a course writer or developer, why not help us in creating a course and get a course builder badge? And of course, please help us spread the word. Tell others that you've been to this webinar and tell them to come and watch the recording. All our webinars are recorded, so you can watch them afterwards and um, complete the courses to get highly prized Moodle Academy badges, which you can share on social media. If you're an educator, we have a course to see if you're ready to take our Moodle Educator Certification Program. And um, that's also worth trying and seeing if you can get the ultimate Moodle Educator Certification. So um, I'm going to say thank you very much. Again, thanks to Martin and Paul, and thanks to all of you. And I'm just going to stop the recording now. <laughs>